Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. Cette image est gravée dans nos mémoires. Le 4 novembre 2008, nous n'étions pas en train de rêver. Mais la présidence de Barack Obama sera-t-elle aussi révolutionnaire que son élection L'Amérique est-elle en train de changer de visage Pour le savoir, nous allons traverser le cœur des États-Unis. 2000 km, des États du Sud conservateurs aux États du Nord et la ville de Chicago, fief politique de Barack Obama. Nous sommes dans le sud de la Louisiane. Au moment où nous commençons notre voyage, cela fait déjà trois mois que la marée noire se répand dans le golfe du Mexique. Et le pétrole menace de polluer les eaux poissonneuses des bayous. Édouard sera notre guide. Il est indien et francophone. Mon papa et ma maman parlent tout le temps français. Et je n'ai pas eu d'école, moi. Je n'ai jamais été à l'école. Il y avait des cols pour les blancs, il y avait des cols pour les noirs. Il n'y avait pas pour les indiens. Mais j'ai fait ma vie. Alors là, on met le bateau à l'eau, si on peut. Édouard a vécu de la pêche toute sa vie. Il attrapait aussi bien des crevettes que des alligators. Aujourd'hui, il a rendez-vous avec des anciens collègues sur la presqu'île de pointe aux chênes Because I knew Obama had me. I did this. I'm gonna say it this way. I believe that Obama is a terrorist. He want to destroy the United States. I really believe that. That's my opinion. But why? Why did you think that? Because his family from overseas or whatever, and he was in, like in, in, in terrorist people. In my book. Looking at the willow trees along the bayou Think about his baby, sweet Mary Lou À la suite de l'explosion de la plateforme pétrolière, Obama a donné un signal fort. Il veut empêcher tout nouveau forage dans le Golfe sur une période de six mois. Mais ici, contre toute attente, cette initiative passe mal. What are you doing? Fishing crabs over here? Yeah, I'm trying to catch a crab. It's been uh, over a month, I couldn't go fish no crabs. And uh, 
like I say, oil is the is the dependent bone in Louisiana. It always been ever since I was a young boy. Oh yeah. If you stop drilling right now, then you're going to go into a recession. You still need to go to a renewable energy. But until you can get that, you need to leave the oil field working to keep these people working. Mm. Don't lay off thousands and thousands and thousands of no. people because of one mistake that BP made. Mm. Everywhere I go, they're fed up with the federal government. Because the federal government's not getting, pulling together. The federal government's working against the people. That's what I see. Well, it's okay. You want to go? Great, yeah. Thanks for that. Okay, man. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I hope have it, a nice day. I hope yeah, okay. you too. Good luck with the crab. Ici, on ne compte pas vraiment sur le président pour régler le problème de la marée noire. Édouard croit plus volontiers aux vertus de la bonté divine et plus particulièrement aux prières du Père Roque. God, our Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and through the intercession of all the mortals and saints and pray, Lord God, for our condition with this uh, oil spill that we were experiencing throughout the um, Uh, coast of Louisiana and uh, Mississippi and uh, uh, other states. We uh, come to you and pray that uh, you will send your spirit upon all those who are responsible, from BP to the president, that you will fill them with your spirit, that will give them the knowledge and understanding of what to do in order to shut uh, these wells uh, down. Brothers, in Jesus' name, amen. Bonjour les cousins, les cousines. Let the good times roll. Les autres, on laisse les bons temps rouler dans la Louisiane. Et on ne lâche pas la patate. Ça veut dire, perds pas le courage. Voilà le beau bateau qui passe, un regard pas derrière nous. God only knows when his sweet marvelous comes home. Waiting on his rocking chair to choose to be cold. Président Obama, ça va être le meilleur président que jamais les États-Unis a eu et, il, et qui aura. La grande différence entre Obama et les autres présidents avant lui, c'était que eux, ils agissaient souvent en vue « qu'est-ce que je dois faire pour être élu ?» Et même maintenant, aux médias, on commence à entendre euh, les rapporteurs dire « on croit qu'il ne s'intéresse pas à être élu de nouveau. Et moi, je trouve ça vraiment très bien. Les jumelles Audrey et Maudrey sont les deux stars de la francophonie dans les Bayous. Elles ne manquent jamais une occasion de défendre les couleurs de leur président. Et dans une région qui a voté républicain à 70% en 2008, elles ont fort à faire. Moi, je crois qu'il y a des gens qui ont voté pour Barack, mais comme moi et Audrey, ça n'a pas dit que ça votait pour lui. Ça avait trop honte, ça ne voulait pas dire que ça avait voté. Parce que quand moi je disais j'ai voté pour Barack, il y a des gens qui gardaient comme j'étais fou. Mais je <rire> n'avais pas peur de dire que j'ai fait ça. J'ai un message pour mes cousins ou bien mes amis racistes. Si vous ne pouvez pas voter pour son côté noir, votez pour le côté blanc du président Obama. Soutenez cela. Il y a très grande différence entre eux. Le républicain et le démocrate, c'est que chaque matin, quand le démocrate se lève, il se dit « qu'est-ce que je peux faire pour aider à mon voisin ?» Le républicain dit « qu'est-ce que je peux faire pour assurer que mon petit-fils ne va jamais travailler de sa vie ?» Oh, je ne connais pas, t'as entendu ça C'est la façon dont ils agissent, ils font comme ça. <rire> It's been five years since Katrina ravaged the Gulf Coast. There's no need to dwell on what you experienced and what the world witnessed. Water pouring through broken levees, 
mothers holding their children above the waterline, people stranded on rooftops begging for help, and bodies lying in the streets of a great American city. It was a natural disaster, but also a man-made catastrophe, a shameful breakdown in government that left countless men and women and children abandoned and alone. home because I didn't think it was going to be that bad so you know what I'm saying that much water you know so it's something new for somebody out the hood you know what I'm saying yeah so, so yeah that's our that's, that's gonna be our new house right there we lived at 2501 Foster which is a few blocks down when we came back after the storm there was a land house there nobody know what happened to the house the only thing was sitting there was a poach and a toolbox on there that's it and no sign of the house it was one of my church members house they found this house over there by that light, with him in it, dead. Cause that house floated from over there to over there. They had, they had, they had houses all in the streets, you know? Uh, yeah, we'd be back about 20 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah about 20 years. Yeah. Did it make any difference in the area when uh, Barack Obama was elected here? Nah. Well, I mean, we were, what can one man do? I mean, what did Bush do? You know? So I had insurance, so I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> I had a little insurance to help me out, so. I'm still waiting on some money from Bush, uh, uh, Obama, uh, Obama uh, anybody, yeah. uh, uh, even Europe, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, tell the Queen send something, you know, yeah, so uh, we got to go now. Comme souvent en Amérique, ce sont des bénévoles qui se mobilisent et travaillent à la reconstruction. Ici, le projet Saint-Bernard fédère des associations religieuses venues des quatre coins de l'Amérique. You guys are in the Lower Ninth Ward in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana and most of this area was pretty much underwater. This house belongs to Mr. Roosevelt Houston. You can see out here, he's been living in a FEMA trailer for the past five years. Uh, they're not very well insulated, they're cold in the winter, hot in the summer, not a very comfortable place to live, so you can understand why someone want to get back in their house. And I came down here and saw it was definitely shocked my system. You know, five, as I said, five years afterwards, like a lot of these neighborhoods are still so run down. A lot of schools haven't been reopened. Um, it's just a shame, man, it's a shame. Ces jeunes volontaires de Caroline du Sud ont parcouru 1500 km pour venir jusqu'ici. Elles y passeront tout leur été. Those things are funded by monies and contributions given by local congregations toward these projects. So it's not related to the government, it's not tied into the government whatsoever. It's all community-based, grassroots-based, and no. La lente renaissance de ces quartiers ne doit pas grand-chose à l'argent public. Il n'empêche, si Obama n'est pas le sauveur de la Nouvelle-Orléans, son élection a redonné espoir à toute une ville.
And and thank you by him being a Negro, you know, the first Negro president they ever had. I thought there was never ever a Negro president, you know? Because they were getting everywhere else, but I didn't think they were going to get in the White House, you know? But, you know, the Bible being fulfilled every day, they say it's going to be a big change, and it's a change just like it is in the Bible, you know? The Bible says, you know? I'm glad to see him in there. You understand? But sooner or later, they probably were going to have one in there, you know? And uh, so far, since he's been in there, he's been doing a good job. Well, he might have another one, you know? Mr. Okra sillonne les rues de la Nouvelle-Orléans depuis plus de 30 ans. Et aujourd'hui, il a pris son neveu avec lui pour qu'il apprenne les ficelles du métier. Okay, love, thank you. That's all right. A lot of my vent, friends voted for him. A lot of my customers voted for him. You know? You too, you voted for him? Yeah. He can't vote. He's too young to vote. Man. <laughs> He's too young to vote. But I voted for him. Were you happy that he was elected? Yeah, we was, we was eating cake. We was jumping around, all that, because we were sitting there watching him the whole time on TV. Just watching it. As soon as I saw him going, I was like, woo! Started jumping, went in my room, came back out and was yelling. <laughs> it was super fun. It was time for a change, man. Nous avons rendez-vous avec Robert Hillary King, un ancien cadre des Black Panthers, ce mouvement noir de lutte armée qui, dans les années 60, avait déclaré la guerre à l'Amérique blanche et raciste. Alors aujourd'hui, Robert King reconnaît-il Obama comme l'un des siens the change, but a catalyst for change. So why didn't you vote for him? Because I chose not to. Huh? Because I really I chose not to. I chose not to vote for anyone. I, I chose not to. I like progressive politics, and at the time, Barack Obama of politics was not progressive enough for me. And you asked me, would I vote for him again? Uh, he hasn't shown me enough. I mean, I'm not downing uh, Barack. He's probably the best that this country has if they want it to, uh, if they want to really get this country on the right course. A lot of young black kids in class now can, you know, they don't, they, they could really hold their heads up now and, and feel good, you know, because after all these hundreds of years, here's somebody that looked like them president. And many could really identify now with the country. It's deadly serious, yo. When we get in the game, it will get deadly serious. You'll be feeling us, not just hearing us. The time is here and trust, prepare for us. It's clear to us there's not enough space here to us. It won't be just what happens usually. We'll explode and leave a hole where London used to be. Oh, being a young black man, and when Obama got elected and he won, what it meant was I couldn't use any more excuses. It meant like there was nothing holding me back but me. I could no longer use my color as an excuse for why I can't do something. It showed that you don't have to be white in order to run the country. You don't have to be an old white man in order to run the country and to have power. You could be a young black African-American and you could still have power, still have a say on what happens in this country. It makes it feel like it's your home too. If I want to be a teacher, I could be the best teacher around, guitar player, I would be incredible. Just gotta put the work for it and I know I could do it now. Next election year, I'm turning 18 next year, so I get a chance to vote, get my voice out there. I might even run some, who knows?
cap sur le nord. Nous allons remonter le cours du Mississippi pour rejoindre le centre du pays. Hi guys. How's it going today? Yeah. I'm nauseous. Why? It's really cool. Adia a 24 ans. Elle vient juste de terminer des études de musique à New York. Cet été, elle traverse le sud des États-Unis, où elle est née. Une région où elle n'a pas que de bons souvenirs. We grew up in Campobello. It's about 1200 people. And in 1999, they were still having KKK rallies down Main Street. And I think when people say, like, Barack Obama is elected, so therefore we are in this post-racism you know, racism society, it's, it, it's not true. The racism is still there. The people that were walking down Main Street with their, you know, hoods on, they didn't vote for Barack. They never will. He didn't change their minds. I wanted to believe in Obama. It's kind of like a kid believing in, like, Santa Claus or you know, the Easter Bunny. Everyone was hoping for change. You know, that's what he, he ran on was, you know, the promise of change. And I think a lot of people are realizing now that America is really not going to change all that much. So, you know, we've been told for so long that you can have whatever you want, like, and you, you deserve whatever you want. And we've been told for so long that we are the best. And, you know, this American exceptionalism, which, frankly, it's bullshit. Probably gonna get beat up. Like someone's gonna come and like smack me. <laughs> you guys are gonna get me killed. We're riding through Mississippi, and I'm like talking like in shades of socialism. Yeah, actually, what do you think of those who accuse Obama of being a socialist? I mean, they don't know what socialism is. It's actually very scary to watch. You know how many people are buying into the nonsense of, you know, like, we are veering towards socialism. We're not like. We are so far from socialism, it's ridiculous, but I think it's just leftovers from the Cold War nonsense. People scared of like the pinkos, the communists, and they don't even know what they're afraid of. They're afraid of everything. Do we want to be part of the 21st century or do we want to remain conservative? You know, think back to the days of your 1950s, the way the country used to be. We need to decide, like, are we going to try and go back into the past where we, where we dominated the world? Or are we going to work with you guys, the rest of the world? And I think that's what Obama represents, a changing of the guard in America. You know, it's no longer the days where it's the white man that dominates completely. We're looking at a, a tan world. It's a brown world. For a lot of people, that's not cool. They're fighting it tooth and nail. And it's kind of pointless, I guess. A ho, a ho. The whisper of the leaves are lost and from the trees. A ho, a ho. The rivers of our lives don't flow in a straight line. Flowers and springtime. Nous venons de passer dans l'état du Missouri, une région rurale en plein cœur de l'Amérique. Bienvenue au bar Outerville, le repère favori des ouvriers agricoles des environs. We don't give a damn about the government or the president. We okay, don't care about... We still live like a Western. Yeah, I mean... You got your laws, but as long as they don't come in my yard and affect me or my family, that's right. go ahead with your laws. We might have but our modern cars, but family, we don't have modern laws. I'm going to rebel.
now. You can see here, the rice, you can see the seeds. About September to start turning brown, leaning over like that, and ready to harvest. We're feeding America. We're out here, we're making your soybeans, we're making your rice, we're farming cotton, your corn, your milo, everything that feeds America and clothes America, but yet we're the least paid people. 41 and a half hours, I grossed $435.75. I brought home $334 of that. All I use it for is to shoot snakes. Makes me feel safe when I walk out there and walk up on a big snake. It's a way of life right here, you know? Just about everybody's got at least one gun, and I carry it, I just drop it right down in my boot. That's one of the great freedoms we do got here. That are just the pleasure of just pulling it up and, you know, shooting a can or something, you know? I don't know how, <laughs> I enjoy it, you know? A lot of people think, well, what, what's the pleasure in shooting a can? You know, it's, I, it's fun, Yeah. you know? Country it's, way of life. Yeah. We live day to day. We don't never know what's gonna happen tomorrow. But as far as the I'm government's cool concerned, it's not a worry in our mind. Nothing that Obama does or anybody else does, we're not gonna be able to stop them. It's we fun. can't change it, all we can do is gripe about it. That's it. I mean, we have to work to have fun, but yeah. we have our fun. I yeah. mean, no well, then I was a lot younger and more laid back. Mm. It was all about the fun. I got a little older and realized, you know, someday I either gotta retire or die. I'm hoping to retire. Yeah. <laughs> Après avoir pris de gros risques, nous réalisons que nous sommes bel et bien perdus. You better get, get one to show off. <laughs> and I was wondering, now that uh, President Obama is in the White House, if you could catch more fish. I better catch more fish than anything to eat. Ain't nobody got any damn jobs on account of it. You think it's because of him? What do you think? They spent three trillion dollars in a year and a half, and nobody's got any benefit out of it. Now they're gonna raise taxes on everything. Glenn Beck's on right now. You should listen to him sometime. Maybe we can listen to him. Maybe we can. All we gotta do is turn it on. That's Glenn Beck. Now, he may not think that he Chaque semaine, know. plus de 10 millions d'Américains écoutent Glenn Beck. Cet animateur sulfureux est devenu le porte-parole de l'Amérique réactionnaire. What really it is, they're all progressives. It's been going on for a long time. But they just escalated it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are waking up now, though. Every day, thousands are waking up by the day, figuring it out what they're trying to do to us. We'll get it back, I guarantee you. This is America. It's different. Freaking socialist, man. I don't like socialism. Socialism sucks. That's not freedom. When the government tells you what you can and can't do, that's not freedom. That's far from freedom. I don't like it. That's why we don't like Barack Obama and the Democrats. That's a freak car. Because they're putting us out of business. They're putting us out of business. They're doing it intentionally. This is not by mistake. This is all by design. I always vote. If you don't vote, you don't have a gripe. I'm still above the grass, I'm gonna vote. Guarantee you. <laughs> So we want 
want to create a system in which health care is working not for insurance companies, but it's working for the American people. This is the toughest insurance reforms in history. Le 21 mars 2010, Barack Obama réussit l'impossible, réformer le système de santé américain. Une véritable révolution des mentalités que les républicains cherchent à saboter par tous les moyens. La sénatrice républicaine Jane Cunningham est en première ligne dans cette bataille. All right, let me get into an issue that um, was particularly important to me because I introduced this bill. It's called the Health Care Freedom Act. It says that no person, employer, or health care provider shall be forced to participate in a health care system ordered by the government. That vote will be on August the 3rd, and it is Proposition C. En organisant cette consultation des citoyens du Missouri, Jane Cunningham espère sonner l'heure de la révolte. The Health Care Freedom Act that we have and other states have too is just a vehicle that really represents state rights, states' rights right. against an overreaching federal government in cap and trade, in health care, in taking over businesses. There you go. Okay. You got my point. Okay, if we break it with the Health Care Freedom Act at the federal government, it will trickle down to those other areas. I hope so. Don't you think that in a certain way, this, what Barack Obama is, is doing, can be a certain progress for the country? How do you see it as progress? Depuis un siècle, les présidents démocrates en ont rêvé. Obama l'a fait. Désormais, ce sont 32 millions d'Américains de plus qui seront couverts. Et pour tout cela, le président est un héros. Excuse me, hi. Are you talking about Barack Obama? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's kind of an overachiever. We're huge fans. Yeah. <laughs> It was weird to see a politician who understood the problems of the citizens, the problems that everyday people face when it comes to health insurance. And so that was, that became my issue. I was like, oh my God, we can change this. This guy, he understands, and he's cool, and he's really smart, and his speech was unbelievable. Um, people like me who have a pre-existing condition can now buy health insurance. Whereas before in America, where we have a free market, you couldn't even buy health insurance if you were sick. And now you can, I can. And so I won't be broke forever. By the way, did you guys know where you are? This right here is Barack Obama Boulevard. I can take you down and show you the sign if you don't believe me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Some things need a little changing. Why not name a street after him? While he's president. all the needles I've used over the past couple of weeks and I take about six or seven shots a day I'm on intensive insulin therapy I was diagnosed with diabetes in 1993 um, day after my birthday and 
and I, my parents had health insurance, um, and I was covered when I got sick. And over the years, I have struggled with health insurance companies, getting them to pay for the things that they were supposed to pay for. I spend a little bit over $1,000 a month on my medicine alone, and those things would mean that I could live longer and not go blind when I'm 50 and uh, still have, you know, feeling in my fingers and toes and not face amputation and kidney failure. But I've been cut from my health insurance time and time again. I went to them. I went back to their company. I filled out all the application forms and I said, you know, I'd like to buy health insurance from you. They sent me a nice letter in the mail. Dear Mr. Lotus, we regret to inform you that we are not unable to offer you health insurance due to the following reasons. Diabetes. You know, sincerely from the Golden Rule Health Insurance Company. The Golden Rule for Health Insurance in America before Barack Obama changed it was, if you get sick, you're gonna die broke and you're gonna get sicker and broker before you die. I wanted to go get a job. I can go out and talk to a number of different employers in Missouri and they won't even hire me because they know me. And they check with their health insurance provider before they offer me the job. You, you can't get a job to work, to make money, to buy health insurance. You can't even buy health insurance. It's confoundingly backwards and broken. I mean, I worry about my kids. I, I can't send them to summer camp. I can't take them on vacation to the south of France. Um, and that's, that's my American dream. You know, I want to be able to make money and get ahead. And while health insurance was broken for so long, I couldn't. And I never saw that I would be able to until this problem was fixed. Health reform right here, great, is a big fucking deal. And BFD is a nice way to say that if you want to be politically correct. Fuck that. I've been broke forever. It's a big fucking deal. How can we forget that we need love? Even if some hearts are made of stone. Baby, yeah, you know what's on my mind. Pourquoi la réforme de la santé est-elle si polémique Peut-être parce qu'elle est le symbole de ce qu'une partie de l'Amérique refuse. L'intervention de l'État dans les affaires privées et la vie du citoyen. Cette détestation de l'État, c'est le credo des Tea Party. Ce mouvement ultra-conservateur et patriotique fait de plus en plus de bruit depuis l'élection d'Obama. Pas étonnant alors si c'est dans le Tea Party que la sénatrice Cunningham recrute ses plus fervents supporters. Hi, my name is Elise. I'm a volunteer calling regarding Proposition C, the Health Care Freedom Act, will ensure that every Missourian will have the freedom to choose their own health care coverage. It just guarantees the freedom to make one's own choice. Please vote yes on Proposition C. Thank you. Thanks for your time. How old are you? 14. Wow, you're very much involved for your age. I think it's important for young people to be involved because it's our future. And what happens today is going to affect us for the rest of our lives. You know your European history. And look at what's happening to America. The thing, and the thing that tips every country into socialism is health care. We fought World War II for, with the Allied forces against it. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, for World War II was against na na Nazis. Nazi, socialism, Stalin. I mean, Stalin was an ally of the U.S. during the World War II. Was it Lenin? It was, yeah. Is it Lenin that, that's the bad guy? Yeah. <laughs> well, they were, they were still allies during World War II. It was after World War II that we started having more okay. diplomatic problems with them. Okay. You know, if the rest of the world chooses they want their government to run everything, then fine, that's what they can do. But as Americans, we're saying, we don't think this is going to work. It's not what we want. We're very independent, strong people, and we want to make our own decisions. La tentation est grande, mais il ne faut pas prendre les petits partis à la légère. Leurs discours radicaux volent de plus en plus la vedette aux républicains. Where 
out here for uh, Barack Obama. Uh, he's asked people to promise to vote in the upcoming election. Oh, my goodness. Would you? Yeah. Awesome. It takes a minute. Just fill one of these out. We'll mail it to you really? to remind you to vote. Oh. I'm Mark, your neighbor. Christina. Nice to meet you. Neighbor. Well, I mean, you work here. I live here. Oh. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We'll send it to you, and uh, we'll remind you to vote. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot, ladies. Sous une chaleur torride, Marc motive ses troupes. C'est un membre actif d'Organizing for America, le vaste réseau de citoyens qui a soutenu la campagne de Barack Obama en 2008. And I couldn't even buy health insurance until it was done, and a lot of people just don't understand, but... I have lived through a lot You voted? People think that that's bad. Yeah, I know, I know. They don't understand, though. I, I don't know. I've already tried picking up which, which is the bigger issue. trying to vilify everything he's doing. Yeah. That's, their, that's their plan of attack. It's not going to work. People are shocked that the Republicans are still trying to fearmonger and use crazy ideas and, and stupid fear to try to beat back the Obama enthusiasm. But when he runs again, you will see that passion. And you will see people say, look what he did. Look what he said he was going to do. Look what kind of a president he is. Give me a hand. You gave me. My grip is very hard. <laughs> so my friend, my name is Yosef. I was born in Afghanistan in 1937, and then in 1979, um, like help me, I came to United States. Look, Barack Obama is one man. He's just like a, a, a spare part in my car. I'm talking about the system. The system is wrong today. It is the system which kills Obama, which kills you, which kills me. If a hand is sick, the brain does not sleep peacefully. The heart does not beat normally because there is disease in the body. Tea party is a dirty egg given by the dead chicken, by the barren chicken in the end, and it will create a lot of problems for Democrats and for Republicans. Maybe I am crazy. When people say like that, maybe it's true. Chicago, la destination finale de notre voyage. Chicago, c'est le fief de Barack Obama, l'endroit où il s'est forgé ses convictions politiques. Le but de la réforme est d'empêcher un nouvel effondrement du système financier. Nous sommes à la bourse de Chicago, où la nouvelle vient juste de tomber. Obama veut limiter les activités spéculatives des banques. Il veut aussi protéger le consommateur contre les crédits à haut risque. Et apparemment, la nouvelle n'a pas convaincu Howard Simons, un expert en stratégie financière. The government's trying to take control over what can and can't be done in the financial system. The beauty of uh, the American system, which you know has its flaws, has, uh, has always been you let the market decide. 
I believe culturally, Obama comes from the uh, from from the side that says a prophet means a somebody who's doing something wrong. He thinks that the role of a business is to give people what they want. The role of a business is to make money for their shareholders. Don't you think that what he's trying to do is progressive, even with regard to the financial sector? The American citizenry doesn't like to be told what to do. We, we, we have kind of the cowboy culture here of, you know, get out of my face. He wants to get in your face. We don't like the idea that everybody should be equal. You're going to have winners and you're going to have losers. And that's just the fact of life. You can't legislate that away. américain. Celui de Barack Obama est sans doute bien différent de celui des pionniers, cow-boys et autres chercheurs d'or. Jeff Cummings est avocat. Il a travaillé avec Obama avant qu'il ne se lance dans la politique. Ils ont plaidé ensemble sur des affaires de discrimination raciale. Et depuis, Jeff suit pas à pas la carrière de son ancien collègue. He said he was going to, you know, work to stimulate the economy and, and to try and get people back to work. You know, he said he was going to reform the financial markets. He said he's going to address all these things, and he's simply doing what he said he was going to do. So I think fundamentally, Americans want a fair system. And um, a lot of the mechanisms that are being put into place are intended to level the playing field for everyone, and not just for those folks who have a lot of money, who have always done well, uh, but for the average person. I think he is going to be looked back on as someone who had an extraordinary record of legislative accomplishment against a very determined opposition. When years go by, 10, 15 years from now, and you stand back and just look at what has been accomplished, he will rise, uh, and, and the view of him will rise. Uh, in the eyes of historians and, and probably the country as well. Campus de l'Université de Chicago. C'est ici qu'Obama a enseigné le droit pendant 12 ans. Le révérend Dwight Hopkins l'a côtoyé pendant ces années. Mot de la fin de notre voyage à un proche de la famille Obama. For me, it's probably the most democratic moment in the whole history of the United States. The way he changed American history was to link the leader to the people. That's the big turn in the history of this country. It's the democratic fulfillment of what the founders proclaimed and wrote about. I think a lot of people who oppose the president are shocked because he's actually trying to move America to a new place where America has never been before. One of the major significance of President Obama election administration is it's an indication that America is no longer the number one aggressive superpower that it used to be. And it's interesting that a black person in the White House has been in the power position to transition. It's a new world. Everybody is rising. And it's not that the U.S. is going down, but it has to manage itself in a new global situation. And it takes Obama to steer us in the new 21st century.